Hello everyone, welcome to another show. This uh, show is our email marketing show where we talk about just everything about email marketing and how it can help you improve your marketing and your business. In studio I have Bia, our head of email and e-commerce. Hello, good to be here. How's it? Nice to have you. How are you doing? I'm good, how are you? Laka, thank you. So today we quickly want to start by just unpacking why email is really so important when it comes to growing a business. I think it's one of the most underrated tools out there, Bia, from my perspective. 100%. So with that said, let's maybe just unpack a few reasons why people should be considering email. And I also want to touch on why people don't believe in email anymore. Like that's something that we can unpack as well because I've, I know there's a lot of people out there saying, I've tried email marketing, but it doesn't work. And there's specific reasons why that is. Without any further ado, let's just dive straight in. Um, what is the number one reason someone should be using email today? What do you think, it, what is the contributing factors to someone's growth? Like how do you convince someone to really look at email? It's actually a good question because we've, we've seen that a lot of brands and I mean businesses out there don't really utilize email marketing. And I, th I think it's mainly like you said, it's, it's because they don't understand the importance of email. And um, the main thing that we've seen from doing email, I mean for... 300 now? plus <laughs> clients, clients. since 2018 yeah so what we've seen is email is the best way to grow your revenue without spending so much so when you think about it when you do for example ads ads can you have to spend a certain amount of on ads to get returns on those ads with email the only thing you pay for is the subscription subscription platform so in terms of looking at return on investment email is a lot cheaper to to market your business and to advertise on so looking at ROI for for email marketing specifically we've seen that there are clients that bring in 42 rand for every one rand spent mm. and um, we can just see with all the strategies in place and if you're doing it right because that's the main thing if you're not doing it right it's understandable that you're not seeing the results and also another contributing factor to your success is how big your email list really is exactly so there's a lot of nice ways on how to grow your list with quality subscribers and i think that's where some people mm. go wrong a lot of people also think that e email is uh, a client ac or a customer acquisition strategy so we can touch on that maybe a little bit later because it's not really something that you use to f get new clients mm. i mean you can nurture someone through a process and through that nurturing process, convince a new potential customer that your brand is worth buying into. But at the end of the day, email is predominantly used to bring more people back every single mm. month. And I think that's what people neglect is they spend all this money on ads, but what that's doing is it's r really just allowing you to find new customers every single month. And the second part of that equation is when it comes to growing a business is you need to find new people every single month, but then you also need to bring people back. Exactly. And I feel that's where email plays such a huge role. And we doubled down on email in 2021 because we didn't really have any other choice because it was Facebook iOS updates back then. Mm. So just for some context, we obviously have a digital marketing agency. In 2021, Facebook and Apple had a huge feud. And Apple basically said, well, you're not going to be able to track our people anymore. You know, it's going to be their choice if they want to be tracked around the internet or not. And most of those people opted out from tracking, which meant all our ads started, you know, dim showing diminishing returns. Mm -hmm. And it was quite stressful for us as an agency because, you know, we depend on generating results for clients. So how we got into the email game was like, well, <laughs> you know, we need to make the most out of what we have. And we looked at the resources that most clients had and they had existing customers. And we brought an aggressive email strategy into the equation and that saved a lot of our clients from closing their doors when iOS was a real problem. Mm. So we can vouch that it can actually save businesses. 100%. I think it's also, like you mentioned, it's email marketing is mainly like re customer retention, getting them back to make another purchase. You know, on that point, we can also just explain what the core difference is, right? So we've explained that email is an acquisition strategy, but just an analogy that people can potentially understand watching or listening to this is you're spending all this money on Facebook to acquire new customers, and it's costing you a certain amount of money to get a new customer every single month. But what people don't understand is that you're basically renting space from Facebook and you know any other platform that you're running ads on. So it's very 
different when you own your own house versus renting a house. And I see email and an SMS contact list, for example, or a WhatsApp broadcast channel as a house that you own as opposed to a house that you rent. Because Facebook, we've seen, can get very volatile when it comes to disapproving ads and banning people from the actual platform. How many ad accounts get banned mm. you know, every single month? And sometimes those accounts don't even do anything wrong. It's just they didn't like what you said. So therefore now your account is switched, switched off and there's nothing you can do about it. And so many businesses depend on either Google ads in isolation or Facebook ads in isolation to grow their businesses. And the moment the landlord says, mm -hmm. I'm no longer renting to you, you're out on the street. And that's where email comes in. It's almost like you are building a house for yourself as a long-term investment. And the bigger that list gets, the higher the ROI. You said ROI is one of the biggest things that you that you've seen that it actually contributes to success, right? So the bigger that list gets, the higher that ROI can be for you as well. Mm. And like you said, email um, where, for example, if you do get ads disapproved and your ad account, for example, gets banned and you are not allowed or able to advertise anymore on, on Facebook or Google ads, email is great because you are you have the ability to go as open and broad as possible and what i mean with that is there's no emails that can get disapproved or rejected mm -hmm. so the great thing about that is you can show before and after photos of um, images of, of of your products um there's just no limit to what you can show so what you're saying is you've got more freedom to really express mm. yourself as a brand exactly. to those people and there's a lot of uh, red tape when it comes to advertising platforms mm. like there's certain things that you're allowed to say there's some things you're not allowed to say and when you are saying the things you're not allowed to say, you get one or two strikes and then they're just randomly. Sometimes they don't even give you strikes. Yeah. So it gives you a bit more freedom in order to say what you want to say. Uh, we have a prohibited division where we actually work specifically with prohibited businesses like cannabis, tobacco, alcohol, and all those things. And email plays a huge role in their success. Mm, 100%. Cool. So we're looking at the opportunity for higher ROI, but that is obviously if you have an existing list of sorts but i mean what other what other reasons would there be for someone if someone was like well okay well roi is debatable i've tried it, it's not working mm -hmm. is there any other you know pitches we can throw at them to convince them that email is worth trying so if you think about it email is super personalized you can personalize everything on email and the great thing about that is when you build your list in ways that we can maybe discuss a little bit later, but you build up that customer list or that, that subscriber base, you are s able to go and segment them into what they are interested in. So for example, you get that cust you build up the customer list, the subscriber list, and you can, you are able to specify specifically what they were interested in, for example, purchase behavior or looking at their website behavior, what, whatever they clicked on, on the emails, whatever they opened. So in terms of that, you get so much insights, from email, it gives you a lot of insights on all of your subscribers to be able to provide them specifically what they need. If you are a brand with a lot of different products on your website, let's say for example, a skincare brand, I always use this example. Um, it's just such a good, good example to show this. So you've got a skincare brand which targets oily skin and then this these products or these collect this collection targets dry skin and this one targets, let's say for example, normal skin. The thing about that is you can't show oily skin products to people that have dry skin. Mm. So the great thing about email is you are able to actually go and segment them and get a lot more personalized so that they can purchase at the mm. end of the day. So that is also where your sales grow. You get a lot of insights on the, it's data driven insights. Hundreds. So you get a lot of insights on the people in your list and people visiting your websites, you are able to segment them and then send them personalized content. Whereas for example, if you have an ad, you kind of blast that out to everyone interested in skincare, but it's not specific that they are these oily skin people no, sure. I'm will ne necessarily buy the dry skin products. I love that because you, you can't segment and personalize your ads on that level. Mm. But with email, you can because you have that data from the actual customer. Exactly. So for those of you that don't know, you can actually add a tracking code onto the site that links with your email software tool. Like we use OmniSend. We love OmniSend. Um, but there are other really amazing tools like Clavio, for example, for e-commerce businesses. And then if you're more traditional business, you know, you've got ActiveCampaign and whatnot. 
But the nice thing is you can put a piece of code on your site, which means the people who are in your list gets tracked. And then based on how they behave, you can then segment them mm. into specific categories. So if someone were looking at specific products that can treat oily skin, you can send them those products specifically, which is something you won't be able to do on Facebook. That's what mm. you're saying. Yeah. I love that. But that also touches on the automation feature of things. Uh, I don't think people really understand how powerful the automated features of email marketing can be. And I've been on a call recently with someone who I said, have you ever been on Take A Lot, added something to your card and then left and immediately got an email? And they were like, oh yes, uh, that happens to me all the time. I was like, well, that's automated. And now you've been automatically categorized. Now they're gonna start sending you relevant information about that product that you left in your cart, which is something you can do on Facebook, but you have to pay a, almost like a premium to show that ad to that customer. Mm. And again, it will most likely never be as personalized as you can do it on an email site. So maybe touch on the automation features of email and what you can actually do from an automation perspective. Of course. So when you look at email marketing as a whole, there's always two things that I look at. It's your weekly campaigns or newsletters mm. that's sending to subscribers that have actually opted in to receive email marketing from you. And then it's the automated side. So the automated side of emails, there's so much you can do. It gives you the opportunity to get, again, dive deep, get personal. Um, and I mean, exactly like you mentioned about the take a lot example, I, before I even started marketing at all, I received an email with the subject line saying, we saw you staring at this just after I was on a website. And I thought, wow, how do they know this? What is happening? And I started getting emails and I mean, eventually I actually purchased because it was really something I wanted. And they, it gave me, it, they took the opportunity to give more information about that product. Sure. So with automations, there are so much to, that you can do. I mean, it's, it's where if someone subscribed, there's an automated email that goes out to welcome them in and to nurture them and to tell them more about your brand. Something that you don't necessarily get to do with websites or, or if someone lands on your website. You can you can get you can give information, but it isn't it's not going to be as detailed and mm. thorough as you can go into with email marketing. So that's where you can tell tell people more about the brand and nurture them through show them the product bestsellers, show them reviews, show them what other people um, have purchased and what they loved previously. And then there's also the aspect of the abandoned cart automation, which is also really like mm. massive automation and it's a very important automation where if someone lands on the website, they abandon that product, there must be a reason why they abandon it. And um, they did show some type of interest in the product. So now the job of the automation, the abandoned cart automation is just to get them in to actually complete that purchase, show them unique selling points of the specific product, show them what, how this will add value and benefit their lives. I use the example of, uh, I mean, it's so spot on what you're saying, but I use the example of if you had to walk into a physical store, there would always be a sales representative approaching you and he would say, hey, can I help you with something today? And you would most likely pick up, a, you know, let's say a, a product. You're in the sports nutrition aisle, you pick up a product and you go, you know what, I'm looking to lose weight. And you pick up a fat burner, for example, and you go, hmm, this looks cool, but you know what, I'm going to probably just leave it because I don't have enough information to make a great decision right now. And it says a lot of money, so therefore... I can't really justify spending this money on a fat burner, so I'm just going to leave it on the shelf. But what happens is a sales rep representative walks over and he goes, hey, sorry, ma'am, are you looking for something specific? Yeah, you know what, I'm trying to f drop a gene size. Cool, well, this, can, this has got this ingredient in it, which is helping you increase your metabolism. It's got this ingredient in it, which basically frees up your, your fat cells in order to be burned as energy, which means you're burning more energy throughout the day without really having to exercise. But if you do exercise, you can just lose so much more weight. Some people lose up to you know four to eight kilograms over 12 months. And that's why this product is the price. That's the credibility right there. Exactly. <coughs> and that sales representative now had the opportunity to convince you you as a customer go, oh, wow, this makes sense. Let me put it in my basket and walk out the store. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully you pay first, obviously. <laughs> so it is understanding that when you have an online store, you don't have that luxury. You don't have the luxury of someone chatting to every single visitor and answering the questions that they might have in their minds. Because the only way to prompt a conversation is by clicking on a button mm -hmm. and then asking a specific question about the product 
but there's so much friction in that because one, it's intimidating, but two, you don't know if you're going to get an answer right, right away, so you most likely don't do it. And if the answer is going to be a reply, it's most likely going to be automated and not necessarily what you wanted. So where emails come into play is if someone had to digitally leave their product mm. on the, uh, you know, in the aisle and didn't put it in their basket, the email can start convincing them about why that product is actually worth buying. But now the luxury that you have is the sale is just one click away where if it was a physical store, that person had to drive all the way back, mm. waste 20, 30 minutes out of their day in order to go buy that product. And I think that's really where people not really understand the power of, of email marketing and how it can actually act as a sales representative of your business. Mm. 100%. And I think it's even easier to do it online now because it's once off set up and um, it just fires automatically. Automatically. It's like a, a piece of uh, artificial intelligence, you know, that obviously runs 24-7. So it's like imagine you have a sales rep that's hyped up on Red Bull 24 hours a day. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's basically what you have. Yeah. yeah, that's the power of email. Um, but you also mentioned there's a couple of other automations that you can do. Uh, what, what are some of the our most favorite ones that are actually generate revenue for businesses? Okay, so the favorites are always welcome automation and abandoned cart automations. Those are just the automations that generally generate the most mm. like sales. But if you look a little bit deeper, what we've recently done is we started building out, and I call it product scaling automations. Um, and that is where you, let's say you have a store with a lot of products on, on your website. It sometimes can cause a little bit of confusion and friction for people going to buy one specific product, but then get distracted by all of these other products. So what we do with a product scaling automation is we basically set up a browser abandonment automation or a, or a product abandonment automation, which just means that when someone visits the website, lands on that page, read a little bit through the product, skim through, but then left without even adding to cart or purchasing. That is a trigger that we set up, but for sp a product specifically. So looking mm. at a top seller on your website, um, this also works really well if you have very detailed, in-depth, in -depth, like technical products. I'm not sure. I'm with you. No? So if it's like very, um, it needs a lot of information. You actually need to learn, like, health supplements it's almost and like um, having a complicated product yes. in a way where the value is not always upfront. exactly it's not like a, a fat burner that has a label on it that says guaranteed four kilogram weight loss in mm. four weeks you know some products do have uh, a bit of a complexity behind it and i think that's where what you're saying exactly. it works quite well yeah so with that then we just trigger when whenever someone lands on that page or maybe add it to their cart that product page um this automation triggers, and it's a five email series. Now, people might think, oh, five mm. emails in well, this automation. Well, most people just have one, right? And it's one <laughs> exactly. of the biggest mistakes you can make <laughs> out there is just having one automation that fire. Um, yeah. Because most people, it's either going to end up in spam or they're not going to see it. So you have to be a bit more persistent. It's not powerful enough. I mean, there's so much you can add and so much value you can add. And it all it's going to depend on the, the trigger and the timing. So... You send the first email, let's say an hour after they abandoned that product or they viewed the product, but they they just left. You know that there are some reason why they are a reason why they they landed on that page. So the series goes. It's there's, there's a lot of things you can add. I mean, like I mentioned, unique selling points of that that specific product. Um, value. How can this add value to your life? Mentioning the pain points specifically the pain points that uh, people might I be think facing. People underestimate how much psychology plays a role in selling products. And what I'm hearing you say, and I completely agree with this, is that hypothetically, at least in my mind, if we had to equate for a sale from zero to 100%, I'd say that 80% of a sale or 90% of a sale is most likely just pure psychology. Getting someone to understand the value that's sometimes the most hardest thing to do because I don't think people, especially business owners, don't know how to sell their own products mm. because they, they're so ingrained in their business that they actually forget how to speak to someone in layman's terms about why the product's actually mm. so amazing. And that is an art. And I think that is where the, the emails come in so beautifully because you can handle all these psychological issues mm. like, I don't like the price of the product. Well, have an email where you specifically talk about why the price is the price. I don't like whether I maybe can't trust you or not. So have an email where you actually have reviews and testimonials and showing other people losing weight for whatever you know the main benefit might be of the product. And 
oh, you know, I don't know sure if the quality is good enough. Well, have a video on how it's made mm. in the email that clicks and opens up or explain the process. And I feel this is where you handle all those psychological things after someone expressed interest. Mm. So if you think about Facebook ads, and, if, and this is a nice way to sum it up as well, is the ads are designed to create the interest. But email can act as someone that converts that interest into an actual sale because between the interest and the actual sale, there's objections. Mm. I, I'm not sure about the quality. I'm not sure about the price. I'm not sure if I can trust you. Emails can help you quite easily handle all those barriers. And it's good. I feel like it's also important for a business owner to s identify those objects, uh, objections, listen to what the customers are saying or potential customers are saying. Look at the frequently asked questions. Identify those objections and make sure you answer them in the, in the emails. And just to add on top of that, I wanted to mention, when I build out email automations or campaigns, I always take a step back and I look from it as from a customer's perspective. And I think, how, what would I want answered as a customer? So I imagine myself being very interested in this product, not, not looking at it as a business owner. I'm looking at it as a customer. So step back, think, how, what would you want answered if, you, if it was you that was the customer, if it was you that wanted to go and buy that product? And it's small little things like that that just helps you create the final piece. And 100%. I think there's a lot of people probably sitting on the other side watching, listening, going, who still uses email today? Because <laughs> I, I know they're out there for a fact because there's a lot of articles I, re I read, uh, a lot of videos I've seen over the last two or three years where people say email is dead. Nobody really reads, reads their emails anymore. And it's purely just spam. People don't have the time. But we have how much data to prove that businesses can easily grow their revenue between 5 to 10% by implementing automations alone. Mm. Not even aggressively pursue an email strategy, but just from the automations in itself, which is welcome, abandon card, product abandonment, um, upsells, cross-sells, et cetera. Those alone, just by implementing that, if you have a business that's obviously already doing revenue, then you can easily increase your revenue by five to 10% without having to invest more on your ads. So it is a service that can actually boost your profitability like you said, because you have a higher ROI mm. on the back end. And not to mention that it can actually help bring customers back, which means it's going to increase the lifetime value out of that customer, which is going to increase the profitability of that customer overall. And it can do that for majority of your database, obviously. Mm. But I think a lot of people sitting there, well, I don't believe in email. Well, the data just proves otherwise. So you can sit there, ignore it, and keep pushing and keep struggling but there is tools out there that can make your life easier. And I think email is one of them. Mm. I know there are people who are probably saying, email doesn't work for me, I've tried it. But I know for a fact that they haven't done it right. What are some of the common email marketing mistakes that you see people make that's actually just costing their money and not really generating anything in return? One of the biggest things that I always tell people when you do all brands, that when you do start with email marketing, you need to make sure that you have a solid subscriber base. And when you grow your subscriber base you need to make sure to also remember what is the objective of getting these subscribers it's not just to have a beautiful list with 10,000 subscribers in there it needs to be quality subscribers and i've seen a lot of brands have this list this big list and it looks amazing but then when you dive deeper and you create segments of all the inactive subscribers in that list you see 60 70 percent of that list is inactive subscribers and that is why your emails are getting lower open rates, lower click-through rates, and lower sales. So that is one mistake that I, I, I've seen people do. And how you can ensure to make sure that you grow your list with quality subscribers to essentially have better sales from email marketing is make sure that you grow your list with quality subscribers, making sure that they are engaged. Because again, like I mentioned, you don't want to have, you sit with this big list and you pay for all of these contacts. But it's all just inactive subscribers that just entered a giveaway that you had because they could win a trip to Australia. <laughs> yeah, bad strategies around growing mm. your list, which means you've got a bunch of crappy leads yeah. sitting there occupying space, costing you money. Exactly. Um, I mean, other mistakes I can think about top of mind would be people sending 
you know maybe not enough of them so they they think that one email alone is going to transform their business mm -hmm. when it's a collective of things that you have to do right starting with the subject line making sure that people actually open it uh, some people's subject lines are just horrid they would say newsletter one <laughs> <laughs> it's like what you're saying oh, no. is don't open this email because it's full of spam um, so it's understanding that there's a way to communicate with the cu with the customer to get them excited about what's actually in the email mm -hmm. and then also how to the email actually looks inside some people you know it's just not great i suppose and and you can be subjective about how it looks and uh, you can talk about uh, you know well they did the colors are not right or the fonts are not right or this is too small that's too big but from a more objective standpoint you're not saying what you're supposed to be saying mm. to get someone to click irrelevant messaging exactly irrelevant messaging and those are some common mistakes people make and i think when they fix those things which is growing a list of quality leads uh, aggressively pursuing email strategies as a whole, not just from a, a newsletter side, and I use the word newsletter in mm. air quotes, uh, saying sending emails once a week, but also on the automation side, getting a bit more creative. I think people, that's another thing, people are just not that creative when it comes to email. They don't mm. know what to do. They're like, let me send a product that's on sale. And then next week they go, I have to send an email. What am I going to do? Uh, let me send a product that's on sale. Another sale. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So you can get a, obviously a bit more creative with how you speak to your audience, how you connect with them, and how you build a personal relationship with them. I think people don't really look at it as building a relationship, but just who can I sell my stuff to? Mm. So yeah, there's a couple of mistakes that I think people make. I hope there was some value in that. Dude, thanks for this. This was awesome. Thanks. I really enjoyed it. I hope you did too. And if you did, I want to encourage you to like and subscribe for more content like this. And We'll see you in the next show. Thanks.